Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder was right. Oh my God. From Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Eddie Hearn finally reveals and admits that he don't trust Tyson Fury to honor no type of contract. Explains what went wrong with the step aside money. Joshua, Tyson Fury, Usyk. Oh my God. Stay tuned. I'll be back. What up, fight world? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, smash the like button. Tyson Fury is not to be trusted, according to Eddie Hearn. He said he respects him, but he couldn't trust Tyson Fury to do what he says. Ironically enough, and I gotta plant this seed on my channel. Ironically enough, when Deontay Wilder had these same complaints, Old media acted like Wilder was crazy, like Wilder was straight insane. And the things that Wilder was saying about Tyson Fury was of no merit. They were making it sound like Tyson Fury was reliable and trustworthy. Tyson Fury, he was going to fight Usyk, he said, and then he switched. And now he says he's fighting Dillian White. Keep in mind, Tyson Fury has said he would fight Dillian White. In the past, he said, oh, I'll fight Dillian White if there's a diamond belt on the line. This is before the Wilder third fight. Then he switched and said he'll never fight Dillian White. Then he said he was going to fight Tyson Fury, said he was going to fight Usyk. And they wanted Joshua to step aside. And then Eddie Hearn explains what happened and went, went wrong from his account. And Tyson Fury then switched from Usyk to Dillian White. So these are the games that Tyson Fury continues to play. And I just feel it is ironic that when Wilder was calling out these same moves and games that Tyson Fury was was certainly playing, it fell on deaf ears. Myself and maybe a handful of people were the only ones talking about it. Without further ado, roll the clip. So last Friday, the big news about the purse bid, right? Dillian White, Tyson Fury. Were you surprised that Matchroom lost? By no, million? because when you've got the lion's share of the bid, and what I mean by that is Tyson Fury was on 80%, which is being disputed, you can manipulate the bid. So what you do is you say to Tyson Fury, look, before I bid, are you happy with $25 million? Because we don't want to lose control of this fight, Tyson. You know, we don't want it on a Eddie Hearn promotion, right. could put it anywhere, blah, blah, blah. So, are you happy? And there might be a minimum, a, a number in his contract even for the fight. Yes. Okay, all of a sudden you know that whatever you bid, you're only paying Tyson Fury $25 million. So the overbid beyond that number is eight, is just to Dillian White by 20%. So the bid of 41 million was not 41 million, in my, unless they want to come out and prove me wrong. It, and by the way, it's not illegal. It, I've done it before. It's, it's just part of the, the process of a purse bid. So we bid 32 or 33, they bid 41. Um, and probably they bid closer to our number, really. Like, it's very simple maths. Do you know what I mean? We all know what we're doing. We know the exact money to a couple of million bucks that will be generated from that fight. And uh, it's not 41, but it's, it's around 30. Do you wish you would have? Now, Eddie Hearn, in an attempt to explain how he got outbid, I don't think he was very clear He's, he's normally, I guess, a bit better with his words, a bit more eloquent, but it looked like he was struggling to explain cohesively what went wrong and why he lost the bid. He's saying they bid 41 million, but they really bid closer to what we bid, which was 31 million or whatever. But that's not true because if you both bid 31, they wouldn't be the winning bidder. So what he was trying to say is, I guess that Tyson Fury probably has a designated number that he's going to get, and he's not going to get 80% of the 41 million that was bid to secure the fight. But again, I don't even know how he knows 
who's going to divvy up the money and stuff. And realistically, neither is neither here nor there. You lost. It's that simple. You lost the purse bid. They get to secure the the rights to the fight. Gone a little bit more aggressive. So Not they, really, because we would have lost a lot of money. That would have been a huge disruption, though. Could you imagine? Yeah, you, but he probably wouldn't have taken the fight. I mean, Tyson Fury, who you know, we don't get on all the time. I do have a, a lot of respect for. I mean, you never know what you're gonna get, you know. And uh, oh, oh, whoa, yo, hold up. He says with Tyson Fury, I got respect for him, but you never know what you're gonna get. But he probably wouldn't have taken the fight. I mean, Tyson Fury, who you know, we don't get on all the time. I do have a, a lot of respect for. I mean, you never know what you're gonna get, you know. And uh, yeah, of course, would I have liked to promote the fight? Yeah, of course. I can't, you know, I can't lie. But I'm happy. Sometimes in that situation, you put a number in. It's like buying a house, mm. Ariel. You know, are you prepared to lose the house? Yeah, I am at that number. And that's exactly the same for that purse bid. So do you want to win this bid? Yeah, I do. But you've got to make a bid that if you lose, no problem. And that's that's where we're at. How close were we to getting the Usyk and Fury really fight? I've heard you say that Fury bottled it, that he didn't really he want didn't it. Bottle it. He changed the, the goalpost change. You know, I had to go and negotiate with AJ to step aside. And he was he in. Never, no, he never wanted to do. Okay. Then it got to a point where I said to him, look, the money's good. You can have a warm-up fight with a new trainer and you can fight the winner for three times more than you're supposed to get to fight Usyk, right? So logically, this could make sense. But when you've got a lot of money and you're a principles guy like AJ, it don't, you know, he's saying, I have to walk down the street knowing that I've, I've stepped aside. I don't want to step aside. Anyway, cut along. So right then and there, it sounds to me as if he was okay with the step aside and then now that the step aside deal is it doesn't matter because they're not going that route Tyson Fury's not fighting Usyk meaning Joshua can fight Usyk and he doesn't need to step aside now it sounds like Eddie Hearn is trying to save face and you know instill some integrity in Joshua because myself included uh Vitaly Klitschko and many others spoke on how bad it would look if Joshua didn't fight Usyk and was willing to step aside. Now Eddie Hearn once once it's known that Usyk and Tyson Fury aren't fighting, so there's no need to step aside. Now Eddie Hearn is is sounds like he's trying to save face for Joshua, so Joshua doesn't look. But you heard what he just said. Joshua was willing to entertain, or his team were willing to entertain the conversation. He's saying Joshua never wanted it, but then he just said logically it made sense. So. I mean, it doesn't sound like it was ever shut down. It sounds like something that Joshua was willing to go with for the money, and it just didn't work out for other reasons. So that's a bad look for Joshua. And now it sounds like he's trying to save face. Step to side. I don't want to step aside. Anyway, cut a long story short. The plan was Fury fights Usyk, mm. and AJ fights the winner. Nice. And See, the plan was Fury fight Usyk, Joshua fights the winner. So that means Joshua was willing to step aside. This is from Joshua's own promoter. Now he can say whatever when the deal didn't go through and, and didn't get finalized. It didn't get finalized for some other reason. You know, Tyson Fury and Usyk, which according to Eddie Hearn is because Tyson Fury switched up at the last minute, which is exactly what Wilder complained about and Wilder fans complained about dealing with Fury. Mm -mm -mm. Fury fights Usyk mm. and AJ fights the winner. Nice and simple. And then all of a sudden, Fury said, I'm not willing to fight Usyk. I want to warm up first. And we're saying, well, hang on. See, these are the games Fury plays. He says it was all agreed for Anthony Joshua to step aside to allow for Tyson Fury and Usyk. So presumably um, Dillian White, because he was a mandatory for him to step aside as well. And Tyson Fury then came out and said, nah, I'm not fighting Usyk next. I want a warm up. And AJ fights the winner. Nice and simple. I don't want to step aside. Anyway, cut a long story short. The plan was Fury fights Usyk mm. and AJ fights the winner. Nice and simple. And then all of a sudden Fury said, I'm not willing to fight Usyk. I want a warm up first. And we're saying, well, hang on. I don't even trust Fury to fight AJ after Usyk. Now, whoa, see? 
This is exactly what Deontay Wilder went through. Listen, Deontay Wilder, no matter what, I don't care if he lost to Fury in his last fight, Deontay Wilder is a legend. Deontay Wilder was ahead of his time. This is why Wilder sued and had the litigation, arbitration, and and everybody act like, even with Glovegate and Tyson Fury, everybody act like Tyson Fury can do no wrong, but you hear Eddie Hearn out, out the horse's mouth on Ariel Helwani's show saying that we don't trust Tyson Fury. I don't trust that Tyson Fury will keep his end of the bargain, and after fighting Usyk, come back and fight the winner, should he be victorious and fight AJ and then now he's saying he wants a tune-up this is exactly what happened to Wilder Tyson Fury said he got tired of waiting and he said I'm doing my own fight a tune-up fight against Ajit Kabiel December 5th of 2020 and Wilder's like yo what, what are you talking about I thought we were possibly gonna fight in Vegas or Allegiant Stadium and we were dealing with this pandemic Fury came out of left field and, and said he fighting Ajit Kabiel in the UK. This is what Fury does. And now you hear Eddie Hearn confirming this. Nice and simple. And then all of a sudden, Fury said, I'm not willing to fight Usyk. I want to warm up first. And we're saying, well, hang on. I don't even trust Fury to fight AJ after Usyk. Now I've got to trust Fury to have a warm up, then fight Usyk, then fight AJ. So we were renegotiating the deal, etc., and then Fury just went and said, I want to go ahead with a Dylan White fight. So I'm glad in a way, because the whole thing was a bit of a mess. Mm. And we didn't approach anyone to step aside. We were approached with this model. And I was willing to entertain it, but it got to a point where it was like, if he's not prepared to fight Usyk, and then you go on social media, you know, and you see uh, Fury, who is brilliant, you know, brilliant entertainment. Oh, Usyk, you bum, you're an easy fight. You know, I'll get I'll get the belts back for England, and then the next thing you're being told he won't fight Usyk. So it's like, boom! Shout out to Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Oh my God! Wilder called this. These are the games played by Tyson Fury, and you know this is who old media tries to uplift Tyson Fury. And this is what every time you deal with him, this is what you have to deal with. Eddie Hearn is just now admitting it. But again, it's funny that old media, old media, when Wilder was accusing Tyson Fury of glove gate and saying Tyson Fury was ducking, his fans, they weren't saying that. They were saying, oh, no, Tyson Fury, you know, he doesn't play no games. Wilder's tripping and boom, boom, boom. Wilder was right. Now you have Eddie Hearn going through the same thing Wilder went through. Tyson Fury playing all these games and saying, oh, I'll fight this dude. And then I'm going to fight Usyk and Joshua step aside. And then he switches up the game plan. You know, so this is who ESPN puts their dollar behind and top rank. It's just it seems miserable to even deal with. This is the this is just to me, it's not really heavyweight boxing. You know, every single time is some games. Can you imagine if Floyd Mayweather was as iffy? like the Chris Brown song, as iffy as Tyson Fury, and said he'll fight Madonna and then kept playing games and pulling out and, you know, failing tests and saying he was sick with Rona. It's just, it's insanity. But more vindication for Deontay Wilder, which is dope, because Wilder was, he was like one of the early people, early adopters to speak on these issues about Tyson Fury and his lack of trustworthiness Drop your thoughts in the comment section, link in the description. And I'm out. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. 
Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster.